G'day, welcome to Art with Alison. Today I'm going to be doing a reverse flower dip. Uh, just to let you know first off that noises you can hear in the background are likely to be my dogs. I can hear one chewing on a bone at the moment, often they're snoring, little squeaky noises, uh, some baby puppies. <laughs> um, anyway, so a reverse flower dip, I'll explain what that is. A flower dip, a normal flower dip, is when you do your original painting that you want on a piece of plastic, such as, you know, you might do it on the, the plastic, a clean piece of plastic underneath. And of course you need to anchor it down and then you place your canvas on top of that dip. You dip it into that paint and pull it off and then you have your flower dip. But today I'm doing a reverse flower dip which is where you actually do the artwork onto your canvas and then you put a covering over it. Some people use paper towels, some people use um, glad wrap or that's what we call it often in Australia but cling wrap, cling, cling wrap food wrap type stuff or any sort of plastic bag, that sort of thing. So, and then you've got to, the main thing with doing this, the secret I believe, is to try and pull, when you're pulling the plastic up, to have the last bit come off is the centre of your flower. And that helps to make the best flowers. I've got a lot of my knowledge and inspiration from Fiona Art. She does magnificent um, work and I love watching her videos where she's, yeah, she just does some wonderful things. Now, what I'm going to do today, having learned from her, but I'm, I'm wondering if the, one of the reasons she gets such wonderful results is because in her la layering of her colours, she... I think there's a, a obviously there's a reason for the different colors in different orders and I'm thinking that the if you have the furthest one from the edge as a darker color then that will give you the petals as they're going down and then if you bring it up to a lighter color then hopefully that will give you the highlight of the edge of the petal and then you have your other colours going down. Um, and then, yeah, so you let, layer it like that is what I'm hoping will give me the result I'm hoping for. It's all experimentation and trial and error. And hopefully more trials and errors. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to, I haven't done this particular pattern before. And I thought I'd give it a go. I thought I'd just do sort of a general flower shape with the colours coming inwards and then another one so that hopefully we'll have the outside petals and then another layer of inside petals is what I'm aiming for. We shall see. Now I'm looking forward to when I get some squeeze bottles but I live far away from any major shops and so mine are on order from online and yeah, it's already been a couple of weeks and still haven't got them. So I'll do my best with a paddle pop stick. Now there's one of the puppies that you might be concerned because it's making a lot of noise, but it always makes a lot of noise just before it falls asleep. The mum's just been in there feeding them and then he gets restless trying to find the best place to sleep. I think that's what the problem is. If it gets any worse later, I'll go check them out. Anyway, I'll try and do it fairly far out from the edge of the, far from the centre. And this is far thicker than I wanted. It's very hard getting a thin line with the paddle pop sticks. only try. Yes, I'm looking forward to getting my 
border in then I'm going to try doing a spiral pattern which Fiona Art has been doing a lot of recently with some fabulous results so I'm hoping to also have success with that so Dogs have just come in from that side, or a couple of them have. Oh, they've gone back out again. They're Labrador dogs, if you're wondering. They're very lovely. Very affectionate, intelligent. That's a bit of a weird shape, but we shall see what that does. Okay, so I've gone with my darker colour on the outside, and now I've got here a, a pearl white. So it's basically a metallic white. So I'm hoping this will give a like a um, highlight just inside the edge of the petal with any luck the blue seems to be sinking in a bit I wonder if it's too thin and I've gone and caught a bit of that blue on my popsicle stick Most of the colours are the Eldorado paints. This one here though is a um, Joe Sonia's. Pearl white mixed with Floetrol about one to one, one part flow troll, one part paint. Puffing and puffing from a dog has come inside. playing with each other. Alright, so that's the pearl white. Now I'm going to go for this Araldo right. purple. So, actually I've changed your mind. I think the lip of the petal wouldn't be as dark as the purple yet. I'll do the magenta. This is the old magenta. It's a beautiful colour. I've noticed in the videos I've been doing, for some reason the colours, at least on my screen, are not showing the true colour. The pretty magenta, but maybe it's my computer. Maybe your screens will show it better. Lovely bright, bright colour. Oh, that's running nicely. It's quite hard getting the paints at the consistency that you want, plus, different paints do different things, even different paints with the same brand of paints. You can't mix them all to the same ratios because they are different. Some are a little bit thicker than others, like 
only Heralda, as I notice the, the blue is actually what comes out initially is a lot thinner than this magenta is a bit thicker so therefore I added more Floetrol to the magenta than I did to the blue but I might actually have to add a bit more of the blue to it as you can see that blue is really sunk in Right, so now this is the Araldo purple. amazing actually when you do these dips and reverse dips how so different the flower that you get at the end is from what you see the initial painting I guess you could say but it's not what you want as you're painting like what I'm doing now is nothing like what I'm going to get it's a matter of learning what the different techniques do like what they end up as and experimenting trying all the different things out different types of paint do different types of things as well and learning that with the Araldos and the globals they don't give the cloud effect is something that I I love doing in paintings um, from what I've gathered from other artists the best one for that is the Liquitex basics which I don't have um, It's like a cat purring, doesn't it? <laughs> it's one of my puppies. They've actually got one of the, the grandmas actually in there with them. It's quite sweet. She goes in there and fusses over them. Right, so now, now I'm actually going to put in a, a mixture of golds. This is actually deco art. It's got different golds as well as Bit of copper in there as well. It's not including the 24k. Doing this to get rid of the bubbles is quite a good way to bring the bubbles to the top and then they pop because I just stirred it then it kind of made it all bubbly again. Yeah I thought this might look nice here. Puppy is fine. Just one of them. It's just they're only a couple of weeks old. Not one of them really finds it hard to settle. Like some human babies, I think. Settle than others. Right. Right, because it's sunk in around the edges there, I think it's too thin. Because I did do the the base coat, the white base coat 
fairly thick. I know when I was first trying out the flower dips, I, for a long time I was having failure after failure and then I was watching a, a YouTube video of a live uh, broadcast from Fiona Art and she was showing the consistencies of her paint and it helped me realise that she actually has her paint fairly thick and I was doing mine much thinner. So I then started doing it thicker, like a thicker base coat, thicker paints and then started having some successes whereas before that it just wasn't working. So if you're having that trouble, try thickening up your paints a bit and see how that goes. So I found if you, if you get it to a consistency where it does leave a trail for a few couple of seconds or so, that's the best I found. I'll just put the lid back on there. Nice and moist. So try not to get bubbles in. If you sort of go sideways, sideways like this, it, it's a better way than if you're whipping it like you would with food because that gets the air in more than if you just kind of try and go side to side. I mean, if you're stirring it like this, is okay. Just try not to, especially if you're lifting your paddle pop stick out of your paint, you're going to be, so she, she lifts it out, you can be drawing your air in. You don't want air in there. All right, let's see what that's like. Oh, yes, yeah, so I don't know if you can see this, but it just leaves a little trail. That's a lot better. Might just go back around the edges. Because when it's very thick, <laughs> it makes it harder to run off the stick. I'll try and get it on the outside. So it gives it the, hopefully it'll give it the, like when the petal goes downwards, it's in shadow. Usually, so it's darker. Oh, puppy's gone to sleep. Mum just came in then. Had a check. One of the mums is actually two mums. Two very small litters. One only had one in it and the other had two in it. It's very unusual. There we are. It's, yeah, that hasn't sunk in as much. Oh, it's starting to a bit. Yeah, I don't want to make it any thicker. Oh, I'll do this on the inside here now. So this would be like the centre of the petal. It should be darker. Set the dogs off. Might be a kangaroo. Well, they've heard a noise. They're quite 
far away from any neighbours. We live on a bush block. Lots of acres for the dogs to play. Alright, so for the next lot. I don't know how this will work. We shall see. Can only try. I kind of want it not to be going the same way the other petals went as much as possible. Now, the pearl white just inside there. I am looking forward to getting my squeeze bottles because I feel I get a much thinner line and a lot more control. Do it the other way around this time. I have the magenta next. Oh, I think I did last time too. <laughs> well, obviously, I thought it was a good idea. Magenta. Mums is in with the puppies. And purple. And then I'll do some yellow and gold in the very middle. It doesn't want to pop. Come on, pop. I'm, not, I'm going to have to try the torch on it, see if that'll make it pop. <laughs> yep, that made it pop. Just do it over the rest in case there's any other little air bubbles. Good way to get rid of your air bubbles. Give it a light torching. Alright, might just put a little bit of greenery around. There we go. I think that's a metallic one, but that's alright. As long as it hasn't had any silicon on it. I'll try and write on my paddle, paddle sticks. Now you might notice, like here I've written E, which means lets me know this paddle pop stick is for an Araldo paint, which I know has been mixed with Floetrol and with no silicon. If I'm going to put silicon with it, I'd put an S next to it. And this one um, is JSP, so Jasonia's Pearl, <laughs> is what that's letting me know. And yeah. I didn't used to do that, so nothing's written on this one, but sure it's fine. Right. I'm going to try and make it look like leaves coming out. Maybe. I mean by the time you pull up your, your 
for our drapets. Also looks quite different, as I keep saying. Thick. Even that's sinking, sinking in my, maybe my white was quite thick. I mean, I wanted it to be thick, but maybe it didn't have to be quite so thick. Quite like it when that runs off the edges. I think it looks pretty on the canvas when you have the colours running off. Which is why I have actually already painted white on the oh mind you it does look like it's dried a bit so if you've got the white paint on the sides wet then any color that goes over will just kind of blend in whereas if the white's gone and dried up that worked quite so well I found anyway it's not the be all and end all This is a, I love this colour green, this is um, the th phthalo green, this is a Winsor Newton paint and this one is actually a deco art, deco art foliage green, so you can see it's a much lighter one, I thought it would go well with the darker phthalo green, it's nice to have two colours with the greens, it kind of just gives it a bit of depth in just all the one colour. Mind you, that phthalo green has sunk in so much, might not be very noticeable. Let's put these blobs on. Oh, there we are. Let's put a bit more yellow in the middle there. Can't really see it. Yeah. The thing with this is to try not to get air bubbles in if you can to start with. The tricky thing, try and get one side to stick and then I just let it fall gently while it's still under your somewhat control. So it's a bit like a bit like when you're applying contact. You want to try and get it to go down without causing air bubbles not as important with this than with the plain contact. I don't know if you call it contact in whatever country you're from, but that's the sticky stuff you might, well, in, back when I was young, you'd put it inside your cupboards. But that was probably before melamine was such a, a um, yeah, this Probably melamine cupboards, you don't really need that anymore, but a long time ago you just had chipboard basically. So you'd want to cover the inside of your cupboards with some contact, which basically put down a nice coating that you can easily clean. See there's an air bubble there. You need to get that out, otherwise you'll end up with a big hole. Well, it'll just be a gap which won't look so pretty. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm not squishing it. I'm just gently tapping it to make sure that there is contact 
between the plastic and the paint. Sometimes you think it's it's you know it looks like it's all contacted, but when you pull it up, you can find oh there's great big gaps. So let's just spend a little bit of time doing this just to be sure. Otherwise, you just wasted all that time and all that paint. Paint is quite expensive. <laughs> you really don't want to be wasting it too often. So, well, you can always scrape off if it turns out a failure or paint over once it's dried. You're still wasting all that paint. You might not be wasting your canvas, but you're wasting your paint. So there's another air bubble there that's <laughs> Even though it's on the white paint, it still does, still important. You might even let it touch the sides there where it's, especially where it's got a bit of green on it. Otherwise it look a bit funny when you pull it up to have a bit, but it's... Anyway, just making sure the edges are all contacted where I want them to be. Dogs will just come inside, huffing and puffing. All right, so now the, shush, shush. the trick here, as I've said before, you want to have the last bit come off right in the center of your flower. So that's the trick. And also, yeah, this is the trickiest part. This is, well, they're all important parts, but you muck this up, you muck the lot up. So I find if you... You have to excuse the dogs. Dogs live in the house with me. It doesn't let go of the edge very far. Right, so it's best often if you just lift up all four corners to make sure they're coming out easily. Shush, shush. All right, so I've started pulling it up. I can't really stop. So I need to head, as I say, towards that middle bit. Even though this is a square, so nice the middle bit isn't exactly in the middle please echo it's enough good girl and then up towards the middle here this is the trickiest part you want to try and it's important not to rush this bit and I find if you give a tiniest twist at the end can give it a nice shape. That's quite nice. But now you need to kind of wait a few seconds or minutes. Because um, you'll find that the colours and the, the effects will change slightly with a A little bit of time. You can see the edges there, they're starting to get little bits of lacing and selling up a little bit. I think that's looking quite pretty actually. Please shush, 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 shush. Not so keen on this straight bit here. It'd be nice if that was more curved. I might be able to use a straw and Blow that in a bit, but I'll just give it a little bit longer to see what changes we get. Yeah, actually, I might do that now. I need more white there to for that to work. When you're pulling up the plastic, it often does take a lot of the edging paint off. Like this white is quite thin now around here and it's important to go back and just touch that up. There's no one there, really.
yeah, I think that's better. It's just given that, that little bit of a curve. Oh, wow. Oh, I am pleased. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Fiona Art. I know on one of hers, she was going, oh, the blue looks... I don't know, she wasn't happy with it. And I said, it looks like a shadow. And that's what I think here too. It looks like a shadow or it's, you know, giving it depth. You could even have the whole background in that dark colour would look nice. These colours actually would look nice on a black background or even a, a really dark navy. Like this colour dark here. That magenta is very pretty, mixed in with those colours. And the purple there with the magenta and the purple then goes into the gold. Yeah. Anyway, I'll just touch up these edges and then I'll bring you in for a close-up. I don't want to move it too quickly. Actually, I'll bring the camera down, I think. Because I don't want to move it and have it all muck up. Because you only have to move it a little bit and it can all change directions because it's so, there's such a lot of paint in there, especially that middle bit. Because when you're pulling it up, you're basically pulling all the edge paint up until there's a lot left in the middle. And yeah, it can, can end up with a big amount of paint in the middle. If you start moving your canvas around, it can, it can move and change your painting. I'll check that edge later. Oh, yeah, actually I'll just torch that. Just torching it, not only we... Again, getting rid of any bubbles that might have happened by pulling up the plastic, but <coughs> hey, it also <coughs> will help. You know how there's these little bits of lacing and the little cells. If there's any more of that going to be likely to happen, this can help it to speed it up or at least to encourage it to happen. I am sorry about the dogs barking. I hope those of you who are having headphones on haven't had your eardrums blasted out. There isn't anybody here. I don't know what they're thinking, but I guess normally I'd be showing them up there. There's no one there, but I can't really do that right now. Not in the middle of, especially when you're in the middle of pulling that. The, the wrap up, the plastic wrap, you can't suddenly <laughs> leave it. I think I might have maybe gone a bit close. I wonder why I'm getting those big cells. Unless there was silicon in the green. But normally I would have written it on the container. Hmm. Maybe I'll do a little bit more because just a couple on their own. Would have better if there were more than just one or two blotches. So you can get the cells happening either from the silicon oil, which causes the paint which has the silicon oil in it to rise against the other colours. And so if say you've got the darker green underneath the lighter green, it can bring it up. Or simply, like, there's definitely no silicon oil in that flower, but we've still got the little cells happening around the edges, and that can happen from the different densities in the paint. Like, one density will go down and the other will go up. So you end up with the little cells. I think that's enough.
I'm so glad that I used the gold in that, even though it's, it's definitely not the 24K, it's come up beautifully in it. It's a mixture of, yeah, the different ordinary deco art golds plus a tiny bit of copper. Hey, I'll bring you down now. Well, this is it for my angle, but I am suspecting that the other way up might be better because that middle bit looks like it's kind of pointing this way. So I might just turn it around. Yes, I think that way up is a better angle for the flower. Try and steady my hand. Try and focus it too, goodness. Wow, those colours beautiful. Look at the way that gold is blending in with the purple and then the blue on the other side. Yeah, I think that's given it oh, get my finger out of the way. I think it's given it the look of the the going down, which is kind of what I was after, even though um, not didn't get the order quite right there. But as in, I expected it to be nearer the edge, but it has that effect with that gold. And there must be some more of that. There must be the inner circle there. Top of the yeah, the paint doesn't stay where you put it, obviously. So yeah, very happy with that. All right. I hope you get some inspiration from this and I look forward to seeing what you do. I do have a new Facebook. Um, well, I've got a couple of pages. I've got my own page, Art with Alison. And I've also started another one um, you can find the details below this YouTube video. So I'm hoping that people from all over the world will join that and we can all share what we're doing and get inspiration from each other, ideas and tips and positiveness. Okay, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you want to hear when I put up more videos, just put, push that little bell next to the subscription tab. And, and also, if you have enjoyed this video at all, and yeah, please push the like button to let me know, because it's, it's nice to see when someone has liked it. Sorry, one of my dogs is very vocal. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching and you take care and talk to you again soon. Bye.